Thank you for watching this free video tutorial from MoGraphPlus.com. Please make sure to visit our website and check out our premium courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Arnold, V-Ray, Maxwell, Motion Graphics and much more. And also please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Vimeo to enjoy our free video tutorials. Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to MoGraphPlus.com. It's Kamel Khazri here with you. And in this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at Corona for Cinema 4D. If you go to Corona website and their download tab here, come down to the Cinema 4D section, you can see we have the Cinema 4D Beta 1 release, uh, which you can download and use it even commercially. As long as uh, it's in beta, you can use it however you want. It's a very, very powerful and great render engine. Obviously, it's CPU based, unlike uh, Redshift or Octane. Uh, but uh, maybe with the crazy prices of GPUs at the time being, uh, rendering with CPU uh, doesn't look as bad as it was looking before. And at the same time, Corona is a very, very powerful render engine. First of all, it's extremely easy to use and user friendly. And probably this is the first and the most important feature of a render engine. In my opinion, it has to be uh, very, very easy to use. I really don't like to go to the render settings and uh, tweak this and tweak that just to get a nice, beautiful looking render. And in Corona, this is exactly what's happening. You just set Corona as your render engine and you're good to go. You can start immediately with your lights and with your uh, shaders and uh, start your render without even having to tweak one single parameter in the render settings. So let me just get back to Cinema 4D here. Now, I'll be trying to be as brief as possible, but it's going to be a fairly long tutorial uh, and it's going to be a freestyling tutorial. I really don't have any plan or any script, just going to be uh, going through uh, some of the options. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at the lights, studio lighting, the light mix, the noising, interior, exterior lighting, sun and sky, HDRI materials, uh, displacement mapping, uh, volume materials and volumetric effects, some of the render settings and uh, shadow catcher. Hopefully we uh, get to finish all of this uh, in under an hour. Now, let's get back to the render setting. And obviously the first thing is to set Corona as your render engine. Now let me set Corona here as my render engine. And uh, if you go to the Corona tab, you can see you have a bunch of settings. You have the general settings. Uh, you can decide whether to have global illumination or not. You can define a material override. You can uh, enable uh, the noising, which we will be taking a look at. You have the camera and post processing tab uh, to control the exposure and some, you know, lookup tables. Uh, we have the scene environment to define, you know, uh, environments and uh, volume materials and stuff like that. Uh, you have these performance settings, and uh, this is where you basically control uh, how uh, the Corona renders your scene. Obviously, you really don't need to touch any of these parameters. And as you can see, they actually uh, kind of encourage you to not touch this unless you know absolutely what you're doing. We'll be taking a quick and brief look at these parameters uh, when we get to this. And we have some frame buffer settings. And uh, by the way, Corona has a very, very powerful frame buffer. Uh, it still uh, can be improved upon, but uh, what it has is really good. And we have this uh, secondary GI. You can see this is all the GI settings that you have inside Corona. Really, this is just this precision value. There's not any other parameter you can see, even though you can have some, you know, uh, setup for animations if you wanna use UHD cache, but you can actually use uh, pass tracing or brute force for your GI and don't even touch this stuff if you wanted to. And we have this team render tab as well. Now, okay, let me just close this uh, settings. And uh, if you, Go to the menus, we have this Corona menu, Corona Sky, Sun, Light, uh, Camera and all of this stuff. And let's start with a Corona Light and add it to the scene. And I'm just going to be looking through that newly added light and just position it in my scene. It doesn't have to be anything specific. I'm gonna probably something like that. Okay. So this is our first light. Let's get back to the camera. Just going to make sure there you go. And uh, I tend to actually make sure my cameras are set up properly. So uh, let's make it a Corona camera. You can go to the Corona tab and add a Corona camera or simply right click on the camera and add a, 
uh, Corona camera tag. Okay, so here we have basically most of the settings are also available in the camera and post processing tab if you wanted to. But for the time being, we don't want to uh, touch any of this stuff. We have our Corona light and let's take a look at these options. But before that, we obviously need to create a Corona material and assign it to the objects that we have in the scene. Now in the material manager, uh, you have this Corona tab where you have access to the Corona materials or you can go to the create tab and shader tab Corona and create your Corona materials from here. Now compared to the uh, 3ds Max version of Corona, we don't have access, for example, to the Corona skin material or to the Corona hair material. Uh, or if I create a new material, we don't uh, get some of the essential Corona maps like uh, Triplanar. But uh, what we have at the time being is pretty sufficient. And hopefully when the main version of Corona will be released, which hopefully uh, probably will be in July. Uh, but uh, I, I don't have any information about the exact release date, but uh, it's most likely in July. Uh, hopefully by that time, we will have access to all of the uh, Corona maps and futures. But let's create a new Corona material. Here we have our Corona material. And if I open up the material at the time, we only have the diffuse channel. And uh, I don't wanna go through these options for the time being, but uh, the first thing I would like you to know about Corona is the importance of this diffuse color volume. And as you can see by default, it's set to 70% and the RGB volume is about 180. And it's very, very essential that you don't go above a value of probably 210, 220, uh, because it's a physically accurate and physically based render engine. And the whitest of white would probably have an RGB value of something like 220, 210. So you are absolutely not allowed to use high values like 240, 230. So make sure this diffuse value is very, very low. Hopefully in the future tutorials, we get to talk about uh, this diffuse color and the concept of albedo and why it's very important to make this color uh, to be not as white as you think it should be, okay? So the 180 value is a very good number. I'm going to actually add it to the sphere, to this abstract object, also to this uh, clock that we have. And for the backdrop that we have, let's create a new material. I'm going to go to the diffuse and define a texture. I'm going to be using this grid.png. Let me just assign it here and make sure it's a bit higher quality. So there we go, we are set up. And now we can actually start the render without any further ado. So let's go to the Corona menu and you can start the interactive rendering and open up the, or you can actually open up the Corona VFB. So let me just open up the Corona VFB for the timing so you can take a look at this. So here we have our Corona VFB and we can start the interactive rendering from this menu. So just click and hold and start the IR. So here is the render that we have. I'm probably gonna stop the render and make sure it's just way smaller compared to what we have. So 800 by 450. And let's start the interactive rendering. Okay, so here is our Corona light. And let's take a look at some of its obviously options. Uh, you can obviously define the light type, whether it's an area or sector, or you can have some object like sphere and cubes and stuff like that. Uh, but at the time being, I'm probably gonna increase my area light size, something like 150 or even 200 centimeters, just to have a bit more diffuser shadows and decrease the intensity to something like maybe 20. And as you can see, you are set up. The GI is correct. We have a uh, nice sampling and everything. You can obviously define the color of the light, uh, some uh, visibility options. You can use a temperature value to define whether you have a warm or cooler light source. Okay. So in this case, I'm just gonna use a simple white color. So this is our first light. I'm actually going to stop this and add a few other lights. I'm gonna 
name this light Corona light left. Okay. Control drag, create a duplicate. And this is going to be on the other side. Doesn't have to be. So there you go, probably something like this is good enough. And this is our right light. So right. And we're gonna have another light and this will be added to top. And let me look through that. And it doesn't have to be anything specific. We're just gonna probably placing it somewhere here. And if I get back to my perspective view, so that's the three lights that we have in the scene. I'm gonna get back to my camera and start the interactive rendering. Now we have three lights, obviously. They are too bright. I'm gonna select all of them and let's decrease the intensity to probably something like uh, seven or even six. Okay, probably something like six is good enough. And maybe select this top light and just make it a bit bigger and decrease its intensity to something like five. And I'm gonna just place it in front of the objects a bit. Okay, that's good enough. And um, so here we have our uh, basically basic studio lighting setup inside of Corona. You can have some very simple option if I get out of this camera. So you can actually take a look at how these lights are set up. You can see we have this directionality option, which basically makes the lights more directional, more focused and less spread. If you want to do that, can make them bi-directional and this way they will basically emitting light from both sides and uh, some you know basic visibility options if I select off the all the lights and can make them not visible in the scene okay let's get back to the camera and obviously I can go to my left light and probably make this one um, a bit warmer and the right one a bit colder okay and now we can actually wait a few seconds and take a look at the render that we get so now as you can see we get a, a fairly clean render after a few seconds and obviously i can stop the render if i wanted to uh, one beautiful thing about Corona, when you actually stop the render, you can simply go to this render menu, just uh, hold on and you can see you have this option called resume last. So and if you do that, you can see the render, your last render in the VFB will be resumed. And as you can see, we have 28th, 29th, 30th passes here. Okay, perfect. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about here, if you go to the virtual frame buffer and take a look at a post tab, you can see you have uh, amazing options here. For example, the tone mapping section, you can control your exposure, your contrast, uh, your highlight compression. You can go to the uh, lookup table menu. You can add bloom and glare. You can uh, work with the denoising if you have it set up in the render setting. But if you take a look at some of these options, you can see you can obviously adjust the exposure on the fly as you wish. So you don't really need to make sure your lights are exactly the right intensity because you can obviously adjust the exposure as you wanted to. You can adjust your white balance. For example, if I wanted to get rid of this uh, warm tone, I would probably you know, use something like uh, 4,500. As you can see, the white balance actually is being represented in the viewport, which is a nice thing. Okay, you can obviously add contrast and you know, a bunch of other stuff that can be done really easily. And you can obviously take a look at some of the other options here. But uh, for now, uh, the next option that I think is very important to talk about is uh, denoising. If I stop this render and um, 
go to my render setting corona and come down to the general setting tab we have this denoising option and the only thing you need to uh, do in order to set it up is just go to this uh, denoise mode and set it to the mode that you want which in most cases will be the full denoising and then you have this denoise amount and denoise radius and uh, the default options are pretty good and uh, this denoise amount isn't a uh, stationary amount you can actually adjust this while you after the render is finished so you don't need to worry about that and if i uh, come down to this uh, progressive rendering limits you can actually set up some limits you can uh, define a pass limit so when the render reaches a specific pass amount the render will be uh, stopped or you can define uh, a time limit so you can say after for example uh, 30 seconds stop the render or you can define a noise level limit if I go to my corona VFB here and go to the stats tab uh, there is this um, noise level as you can see at the timing is 1.67 percent so you can say for example i want you to stop the render when the uh, noise amount is about for example three percent so when the noise amount reaches three percent uh, the render will be stopped which is very cool but in this case i'm going to just zero out this wall use perfect so we have our the noise mode set to full denoising and I'm just going to quickly um, render the scene again and stop it just to see how the denoising works. When it reaches a, you know, more reasonable noise value here. So as you can see, you obviously have a bunch of noise here. So let me just stop the render. And as you can see, the denoising will go through when you actually stop the render. And it's gonna take a few seconds. And when the render is done, in a few seconds, as you can see, we get this clear, beautiful render in about uh, 30 seconds, okay? And if you go to the post tab, come down to the, let's say, the denoising section, you can see you have this denoise amount. If I zero it out, you can see the render with uh, its noisy pixels, okay? And you can obviously blend this noise, uh, this denoise amount in and get a full denoising at one, as you can see, very, very clear, but it can produce some artifacts in more uh, complex scenarios and complex scenes when you have more complex geometries. So uh, the value of 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.65, is a pretty good value as you can see it gives you this uh, very nice uh, denoised version of your render so as you can see denoising is one of the very very amazing features of corona another thing that i'm really excited about is uh, a capability called light mix and obviously you can do uh, light mixing and relighting in most render engines but mostly in a post-production software like uh, new core after effects but here you can do it right inside of corona and it's very very capable you can literally turn day into night and night into day using the light mix now let's take a look at how to set up light mix in 3ds max there is one single button called uh, set up light mix or something like that and when you hit that button uh, all the lights are basically uh, set up in the light mix and uh, you can uh, immediately start your render and mixing your light uh, during the render and after the render. But in Cinema 4D and in this beta release, we still uh, need to do some manual work to actually set up the light mix. And to do that, we need to actually access our uh, Corona multipass and set it up there. If you go to the uh, Corona menu, you have this multipass window and as you can see you have some you know standard passes direct indirect reflection refraction translucency quality metrics some geometry passes at depth uh, some id mask passes albedo passes bloom and glare passes uh, and down here you have this light mix passes you can see you get light mix and light select to set up light mix the first thing you need to do obviously is to enable the multi-pass rendering and then uh, first you need to add a light mix uh, render element okay and this is the first thing you need to do. And then 
how many lights you have you need to add uh, that many light select unless you want to group them and have a few lights represented together but otherwise for example in this case we have three separate lights and we want to have uh, individual controls over them in the light mix so we need to have three light mixes set up for them so this is our first light select uh, let's rename this to uh, light select left and let me control drag and this is going to be our light select right and this is going to be our light select top and in the light select left uh, it doesn't have to be exactly the same name we just name them so we can actually recognize the passes when we do the render so this is going to be our left light we just grab our light and put it here this is our right light and this is our top light here so we have our left light our right light and our top light and really that's it i'm just gonna make sure to enable denoising for all the light select passes okay perfect now we can actually close this window uh, let's just start the render now as you can see the light mix tab of the virtual frame buffer we have access to the left light right light top light and we can uh, change them on the fly during the render and after render so even when the render is going on i can turn on and off my lights and change the color change their intensity and all of that let's just wait for the render to be a bit cleaner maybe about 20 25 passes or let's just take a look at the and check out the noise level here okay i think it's good enough let me just stop this and wait for the the noising to go through you can see now the noise is all the uh, light select passes as well so because we enable that uh, the noise option in the multi-pass window so it's gonna take a while to go through all of them as well but it's a good thing because we can change our lights the way we wish so the render is finished and if I go to the light mix tab uh, you can obviously turn the lights as you wish maybe we can have the top light you can obviously increase and decrease its intensity as you wish and change the color as you can see we have this corona color picker uh, which has some great capabilities uh, we will be talking about that uh, in future tutorials uh, there might be an option actually in the preferences to uh, just make sure we have access to cinema for the color picker um, not sure but there go default no so uh, I'm not sure but there might be a setting to actually make sure uh, you can actually have access to uh, Cinema 4D's color picker even inside the uh, VFB but actually it's a good thing we have the Corona color picker because it has some uh, like the uh, inverse picking which can be used to auto white balancing which can be very great to use now obviously I can change the color of this light maybe uh, make it warmer cooler or even tint it to any other color that I want very very easily let me just probably we can go even extreme if we wanted to maybe our left light can be uh, blue and the left light can be pinkish and obviously I can adjust the intensity of these colors as I wish and as you can see down here we have some features I can bake these uh, light settings into the uh, lights that I have in the scene I can basically reset all of the lights uh, to one and all the colors to white so there you have it so as you can see it's really powerful it's really easy to use so you can adjust your uh, light colors and light intensities after the render or during the render as you wish uh, and save uh, their render and then adjust them some more and save them again and obviously you have access to the individual uh, light 
a select element so you can obviously do all of this in post-production if you wanted to now the next thing i want to talk about is uh, the corona material just a quick introduction to the corona materials so let me just um, actually open up that scene so here we have mastering cgi shader ball and a bunch of material has already been assigned to this uh, shader ball but it doesn't matter let's uh, go to the corona and as you can see we have access to a bunch of uh, corona material we have a layered material a light material a portal material which will be used for interior rendering we have ray switch material shadow catcher material material and a volume material and in this case let's create a new uh, corona material and actually assign it to our shader ball and just make sure we don't have very big output size 650 by 650 should be good and for the lighting as you can see we have this uh, cinema 40 sky here and then we have created a corona light material and inside the light material we have this uh, hdri assign we'll be taking a look at exterior lighting and using image based lighting in a moment but for now let's focus on uh, working with the corona material here is the corona material and as you can see we have a bunch of channels diffuse translucency reflection refraction opacity bump displacement volume metrics self illumination uh, advanced tab and some uh, cinema 4d uh, default tabs as well uh, and obviously uh, you can define uh, your uh, diffuse portion of the material in a diffuse channel you can obviously uh, change the color to any other color that you want uh, you can decide uh, how these diffuse will basically contribute to the overall material so we can obviously decrease the overall contribution of the uh, diffuse using this level value but in this case let me just reset this to default or we can use a, a texture to define the diffuse contribution of the material uh, we can obviously uh, start adding reflection here so now as you can see we get this reflective material uh, you can control basically how much reflection you want. You can use a texture. You can uh, define your uh, Fresnel IOR value here. And unlike other render engines like V-Ray or like Arnold, where you need to define the uh, Fresnel IOR value, for example, you probably want to use something like 2 for a plastic or something like uh, 2.53 for uh, wood for concrete for ceramic but here uh, most likely you want to keep the Fresnel IOR value at around 1.52 and uh, just uh, work with the glossiness to adjust the value but obviously you still can adjust the Fresnel IOR value to get a specific effect so in this case we probably uh, we can decrease the glossiness value something like 0.79 and as you can see we get a uh, rougher reflections we can introduce an isotropy and uh, rotate that uh, elongated reflections that was introduced with the anisotropy we'll be talking about this uh, in more dedicated tutorials but i just want to be very quick about it obviously you can start adding refraction now as you can see now we get a uh, refractive material let me just make sure my glossiness value is set to one again and down here you can obviously control the index of refraction of your material you can control the glassiness so here you can enable caustics which is at a time being as you can see it's very slow and then we have this thin option here as you can see it says no refraction and it can be used for something like um, uh, one-sided uh, window pane it can be much faster for interior rendering you can enable this option you can obviously enable dispersion and uh, use the app number to control the uh, dispersion effect but we can obviously take a look at obviously add some opacity I'll just disable refraction we can uh, you know enable some uh, bump mapping very simply just enable the bump define the texture that you want to use as the bump map maybe use this one here and then control the strength of the bump mapping using this strength value here so if I go something like 50 we're gonna get a stronger bump mapping effect okay uh, then we have obviously displacement mapping and the same thing just enable displacement mapping define your texture 
define the minimum and the maximum uh, displacement mapping that you want to happen and uh, basically you are done and the only thing that remains uh, for the displacement mapping if I go to the corona performance settings here you have this displacement tab and if you don't get enough detail from the displacement mapping that you have set up in your material you can come down here and actually decrease this screen size pixel to something like one uh, maybe 0.5 to get even more detail from your displacement mapping I'm uh, not sure if this can be done uh, per material or maybe per object um, do we have a specific um, I'm really just trying to understand if there is any specific per object option here um, okay so that's good now let's uh, just work with this material and maybe create some stuff and uh, disable displacement mapping a refraction come to diffuse and let's uh, use probably a yellowish orangish color I'm gonna go to my RGB wall use just make it a bit Maybe something like this is nice, just a tad oranger. Then we can come down to the reflection tab, maybe use a map in the glossiness, this PW38. As you can see, we get this nice look here. Probably we can assign a filter and just, just make it a tad darker so the maybe a bit brighter something like this can be nice just five percent Then actually enable this curve and um, just make the rougher parts a bit shinier that's good you can obviously, if you wanted to, adjust the frontal IR value, but I don't think we need to. And we can start our interactive rendering and see what we've got. So as you can see, now we have this uh, nice plastic kind of material. We can obviously go ahead and adjust it. Uh, let's maybe create something like um, a wood material. So if I just add a bit more space here, let's name it wood open it up go to the fuse let's use this map as our diffuse map assign it to the shader ball make sure the preview is a bit more higher quality then we go to the reflection we need to define the glossiness map which is be something like this probably okay and make it a bit bigger you can probably just open a bigger preview just to see so i'm probably gonna go to this map and um, again just probably make be make it a bit darker so the glassiness is a bit more effective so probably something like this Okay, I think that's good. And we can obviously define a bump map. Maybe you can actually use the same map here for the bump as well. And probably use something like 5% of the strength. And we have a basic a material, basic wood material here. And we can obviously start the interactive rendering and see how it works. So here is our basic wood material. I don't want to waste your time and I kind of wait for this stuff to be finished. Let me just stop this. If you want to create something like um, metal material, you just uh, make sure to go to the reflection, probably increase the uh, IR value to something uh, high. I don't know, maybe 25 here. And just make sure uh, you don't actually see the 
you can see the Fresnel is quite obvious at a high value like 25, which is unlike other render engines. In other render engines at something like 20, you really don't see any Fresnel effect, but clearly uh, the uh, perpendicular faces are less reflective compared to the parallel faces when the IR value is high. Uh, and generally speaking, you need to put this Fresnel IR value at a high value like 999, and then you can control the uh, color using this reflection color if you wanna make it a maybe something like um, you know copper something like that and we just need to make sure the diffuse also is disabled there you go and here's your basic uh, metallic surface using the corona Okay, I think it's enough for the material section of this tutorial. We are obviously going to have a dedicated course uh, for Corona 4 Cinema 4D when uh, the uh, basically main version is released. But for now, let's uh, continue with other things. And now I think I'm going to be taking a look at uh, probably interior rendering. Okay, folks, so let's continue on with interior lighting. Uh, this is our interior scene. And uh, as you can see, we have this a fairly simple interior scene with some furnitures and if I get out of the camera you can see uh, we have this um, two windows uh, that allow the light to come in the room now if I get back to the camera and set Corona as my render engine uh, probably the first thing you need to take into consideration when dealing with the interior setups is the secondary GI engine in this case you can see it's set to UHD cache by default the primary GI engine is path tracing and here you define the secondary GI engine for interior scenes uh, you need to make sure this is UHD cache and for exterior scenes or studio setups or product shots uh, you need to make sure uh, or it's better to actually use the path tracing in this case we are dealing with this interior scene so let's make sure our GI solver is set to UHD cache now, it's like the light cache, for example, if you're coming from uh, V-Ray uh, or Redshift, for example. Now, uh, let's get back here. Now, the next thing I want to make sure that I have a Corona camera tag on my camera. That's good. And just make sure we are not dealing with a huge render. Let's make it probably something like 800 and this should be okay. Now the first thing you're probably going to do is to add a Corona Sun and if I add this Corona Sun and go to my other views you can see we have this Corona Sun added. I can obviously select it and make it a bit bigger so we can exactly decide how this looks. Now if you select the Corona Sun you have two main parameters. You have this rotation and you have this angle value and if I start rotating this you can see we're basically controlling where uh, the Sun is right probably wanna try to make sure probably something like this so we can actually have this nice angle and this angle basically controls the sun's height well let's go to probably something like 25 degrees okay now we can go to the corona interactive rendering and start the render and see what we're gonna get so this is our First render, we can probably um, change the rotation a tad and just make it okay, probably something like this. Now we have our Corona Sun set up. We need to actually add the Corona Sky. So from the Corona menu, add the Corona Sky, and the Corona Sky and Corona Sun are linked together. So at the time being, you can see, we just see this very wide background as our uh, sky. And the reason being is that uh, we really don't have uh, the right exposure here. So if I go to my post-processing tab and come down to the exposure value, and if I use a low exposure value like negative four, now you can clearly see the corona uh, sky in the background. And if I set my sun to be a bit lower in the sky, let's say like five degrees, you can see now we have this um, sunset or sunrise uh, lighting and the sky will adjust accordingly. Let me just set the angle back to 25 degrees again. In this case, I'm probably gonna, uh, and obviously we forgot to 
assign a proper corona material to the scene so let's create a new corona material and um, as i mentioned and we discussed that uh, the diffuse color uh, really never should be higher than like uh, 200 210 something like this in this case it's set to 180 i'm probably just going to go to something like uh, 75 percent just a tad brighter compared to what we had about 191 for our rgb values now let's assign this material to all these geometries in the scene and let's run the corona interactive rendering okay that's better I'm probably gonna increase my exposure to something like uh, 0.5 for now okay this is the first thing you need to do then as you can see the white balance obviously needs to be adjusted it's very very uh, warm but I'm gonna just wait for a few passes and uh, we'll adjust the lighting based on what we see and so I'm probably gonna increase the exposure to around 0.75 and the main issue that we have is obviously these burnout areas and it can be very simply adjusted using this highlight compression value so if I hold on shift and actually drag a region around this very burnout area and increase my highlight compression to something like 2 you can immediately see we retrieve a lot of details in those burnout areas so basically by increasing this value you are uh, making more detail uh, visible in the highlights and burnout areas and obviously if uh, you are rendering out uh, for a 32-bit composite uh, you're gonna lose some of that dynamic range by increasing the highlight compression and if I go even increase this maybe to something like 10 you can see we get more detail but probably something like um, I would say 5 is sufficient for this render so now we get some nice highlights and uh, nice details as well and now we can basically uh, start adding our portal lights now uh, in Corona as I mentioned portal lights are added according to the interior scene that you are working with if you have a very big opening a big window you really don't need to use a portal light if you have very small opening uh, you need to actually use portal lights to uh, focus the sampling inside the room and I think in this beta release uh, portal material has some issues in Corona but I'm gonna show you how to set it up very quickly so if I just stop this and uh, get out of my camera basically the way you add uh, portal lights in Corona is you need to actually cap your openings with that portal lights and not put a big uh, light behind the window that's not how you do it so let me just quickly do it so this is the geometry let's um, Get my polygon pen and create a new polygon so here's this polygon I'm gonna select that and split it apart select this and put it out this is our first portal light I'm gonna get back to here and actually delete this and we can do the same thing for our um, other window as well okay we have done okay so here is this second opening nice select that split selected let's move it out and hide it as well and delete this polygon now if I get back to my camera I can obviously unhide this to portal planes then we create a corona portal material and assign them here okay and we can obviously start the interactive rendering and that's how you set up portal lights but in this case uh, we really don't need them but let's have them and for the final render we can obviously go to our render settings in the general settings tab enable the full denoising 
Okay, now we can actually start the render. So let's go to the Corona menu and start the interactive rendering. So obviously we can wait a bit more, but if I take a look at here, we've been running about four or five minutes and the noise level is about 5%. I'm gonna stop that. Sometimes when you stop it, you actually need to, you can see that the noising wasn't applied. So I'm gonna just resume it a bit. And um, if I stop it again, now that the noising will be applied, maybe that's a bug or something, but Sometimes this happens when the noise level uh, isn't, um, you know, close to something like two, three percent. But as you can see, here is with the noising applied, and we have this um, nice uh, render. Okay, perfect. Now we can obviously go ahead and maybe add a bit more filmic shadows, maybe some filmic highlights, add a bit of contrast, and get a nice render. Okay, so there you have it. Now let's take a quick look at uh, setting up basic, you know, uh, sun and sky and maybe uh, HDR lighting. So if I, again, we have this simple scene, get back, use Corona, and we can add our Corona sun and Corona sky, and we can start the interactive render here probably something like 800. So Corona interactive rendering. So obviously when you're uh, dealing with an exterior scene, uh, the better workflow would be to make sure the secondary GI solver is path tracing. And now we can go to our exposure and uh, to see the sun and the sky be better, let's decrease the exposure to about negative four, negative, maybe, let's try negative three, negative five, probably something like negative 4.5 would be nice. And the way these uh, exposure values work, they are global values, you're not just uh, adjusting them in this VFB window. In fact, if you go to your render setting, you can see in the camera and post-processing tab, you can see the exposure is set to negative uh, 4.5. So these are global values but it's very convenient that you can adjust them right in the virtual frame buffer. Now, if I select the Corona Sun, I can obviously, again, go to a lower angle and start, maybe go to something like 10. And if I increase my highlight compression, we can actually see the sun disk and we can maybe increase the size to something like five to see the disc a bit better. You can obviously adjust the intensity and some of these very uh, simple options. And if you select the sky, you can see the camera sky tag here. We have this uh, turbidity option to add a bit more pollution and air also the atmosphere. And we can actually change the sky model uh, to this Rawa fake model and basically add some fantasy looks to our renders if you wanted to. So all of this can be done using the Okay, so as you can see, it's very, very simple. That's how you use the Corona Sun and Sky. I'm gonna just close this. And obviously we haven't created the Corona material. So we can go ahead, create a new material and assign it to the house and to this plane geometry here. And then probably adjust the exposure accordingly. Okay. And maybe we can create some nicer render. Okay, so as you can see, it's very nice. Now, go ahead, just stop this and save the scene. Let me close this one and actually open up another exterior scene that I have, this one. And 
let's create a Corona material. Make sure we have Corona as our render engine and assign this to the geometries that we have. And this time let's actually work on this uh, HDR lighting. And the way you do it is very simple. Uh, you create a Cinema 4D sky and then you create a Corona light material and simply in the emission section you can define the HDR image here so in this case um, let's use this HDR image from HDR Haven that you can go ahead and download it for free so let's just add that and you then simply assign this Corona light material to the Cinema 4D sky make sure the preview is big enough so you can actually see what you're doing and uh, you can obviously select the sky and start rotating it until you get what you like right so probably i don't know something like this can be nice it really doesn't matter that much and now we can go ahead and very simply start the render. In this case, we can set the GI Solver to path tracing and start the Corona Interactive rendering to see what we're gonna get. Obviously, this is a bit too big. Let me just make sure it's smaller. So here is our scene. We can obviously go to the emission and increase the intensity if the HDRI isn't bright enough. That's probably way too much. I'm gonna set it to about 1.5. That's much better. Now we can increase the highlight compression here, but uh, this value is very visible how it works in exterior scenes and if you Maybe go to like 10, you can clearly see how it actually uh, changes how the highlights look in the scene. So probably something like, I would say three in this case is a nice value. And as you can see now we get this beautiful HDR image. You can obviously make it warmer if you wanted to using the white balance. And, but in this case, probably a neutral just a tad warmer, something like this. And now if you wanted to, you can incorporate the uh, Corona Sky. So in this case, we can, uh, sorry, Corona Sun. So we can add the Corona Sun, select it, probably go to a lower angle. In this case, decrease the intensity, sorry. Decrease the intensity and try to kind of match it with the uh, HDR image that you have and look for the uh, basically light sources on your HDRI and match the Corona Sun with that but that will be uh, the topic for another tutorial hopefully but for now I think this would be enough so you can actually wait for this and see what we're gonna get so here you have your nice Exterior lighting, you obviously can set up a basic uh, denoising and uh, have it even look better. We can obviously add some filmic shadows and um, some filmic highlights and get a nice render. Okay, so that's about exterior lighting and HDR lighting or image based lighting in Corona as well fairly simple stuff and um, probably one of the other topics I wanted to take a look at is just setting up a shutter catcher material in Corona so let me just uh, save this scene out and actually open up another scene to work with okay now let me show you how to set up a quick shadow catcher material and how to basically uh, integrate your 3d models into your uh, HDRIs and into your backplates. We have this uh, car model from Cinema 40's Canon Browser, this uh, simple plane geometry. 
nothing specific and this camera okay so let's do this folks so the first thing obviously is to set up the uh, HDRI that you want to have so let's create a um, cinema 4d sky create a corona lights material and we're going to be using this uh, Piazza San Marco HDR image from HDR Haven. Perfect. And assign that to the sky. Make sure that preview is big enough. And um, let's just make sure. Uh, let me just rotate the sky. Doesn't really matter that much. Uh, so probably something like, doesn't matter that much, honestly, in this case. <laughs> I'm still rotating. Okay. okay, doesn't matter that much. I'm just gonna, probably something like this. Let's set up our backplate and we decide on the exact placement of our HDRI here, okay? So we have this HDRI. And then the next thing would be to set up the backplate obviously and the way you do that again let's just name this HDRI we create a new corona light material and this is gonna be our backplate and go to the emission and here we load our uh, basically backplate which is this image here and if you right click on it and go to the properties tab, uh, details tab here, you can actually see that they have used the 24 millimeter lens. So that's very useful. Let's open that here. And what we're gonna be doing is to assign this material to the, uh, if you go to the Corona, go to the scene environment section, you can ha see you have this direct visibility of a right. So you can enable this and assign this backplate to this direct visibility and make sure the mapping is set to frontal. And if I just create a quick Corona material and assign it to the car model and to the ground here and run the Corona interactive, we should be able to see, hopefully. Okay. So, so as you can see, the back plate is set up correctly, which is cool. The HDR image probably can be a bit brighter, but we decide on that later on. Okay. Now we have the. Uh, backplate set up correctly and to actually see that backplate in the uh, uh, in this viewport what we can do is to just create a cinema 4d background let me create a new PBR material go to this luminance and use the same backplate for the background and if you hide the sky in the viewport you should be able to actually see that backplate which is a uh, just a dirty workaround for now and let me just hide this plane for now and make sure my camera is using a 24 millimeter lens which is cool I'm gonna set it up so probably something like this is nice Let's get back and turn on our plane. And if I render the scene, we are on the right path. And the last thing that remains is to assign the shadow catcher material to this plane. So let me do that. We create a shadow catcher material, assign it to this plane, go to the shadow catcher material. Here you need to define that back plate again. And as you can see, that's the only thing you really need to do. Nothing more than that. And let's run the interactive rendering again. And there you have it. As you can see, the car has been integrated 
into our back plate nicely and we can obviously adjust our uh, select our HDR image probably just increase the uh, intensity a bit just a tad okay folks so here we have it and now we just need to assign the material to the car and be done with it uh, and obviously uh, if we are obviously rendering reflections we need to make sure that the HDR image is uh, exactly matching this current view that we have and to do that let me just hide this background for a moment and unhide the sky and let me just rotate my sky so it actually matches uh, we probably need to do some negative offsetting on this, but um, I would say this is a pretty close. Take a look at the render here. You can see. That's where we probably need to put this sky. We can obviously go to the HDR image and adjust it a bit more if we wanted to, but okay, but I think it's good enough. So let me hide this sky in the viewport, hide the background in the render, unhide the plane, and start the render again okay so that's how you integrate your 3d models into hdris and photographic backplates in corona and if i just stop this and probably we're done with this tutorial and one last thing we can take a quick look at some of these render settings that you see here so in the general settings you have these progressive render limits so you can obviously limit your render for example when you are ready to your final render you can limit it based on the pass limit, time limit, or noise level limit, and then start your render in the picture viewer. And after that particular particular limit reaches, the render will stop. Then you have obviously your GI mode. You can obviously turn off GI. We have a one single bounce or full multiple bounce GI, which is normally what you want. Then you have your GI solver, as we discussed it, path tracing and UHD cache. Uh, you can define material overrides and a bunch of other simple options. Uh, you can obviously render specific objects based on, uh, you can have an include list and just those uh, basically objects that are added to this include list here will be rendered and exclude list or just a viewport selection if you want to only a specific object uh, that is selecting the viewport in this case when the mode is set to viewport selection will be rendered. Obviously we have the denoising that we discussed we have the camera and post-processing, which basically where you turn on uh, depth of fill, motion blur, bloom and glare, and hopefully we discuss all of this in our comprehensive Corona course for Cinema 4D when the Corona is released. So basically the main version of Corona. Then we have the scene environment. You can define an uh, direct visibility override, reflection override, refraction override. You can obviously define a global volume material to have volumetric effects. So here's the volume material you created it and assign it here and then uh, tweak the material to get that volumetric effect. We discussed those later on as well in other tutorials. Then we have this performance settings tab and here you have a bunch of options and settings that I'll be quickly talking about them here. We have this GIA balance and here you basically control uh, the balance between uh, global illumination and AA samples. Basically if you have a scene which is for example an interior scene and you need to have a lot of computing power reserved for the GI and you need a lot of sampling to be done on the GI, you obviously want to have uh, this value uh, higher. Okay, so 16 is a good value and you really don't need to adjust it. But in those cases, you can, for example, if you don't have any, for example, depth of field motion blur, you can increase the GI to something like 32 or the max value that they recommend is 64. But if you have a scene with a very strong depth of field or very strong motion blur or very 
um, you know, jagged edges, you can decrease the AA balance to something like eight. And this way, uh, the sampling will be more focused on depth of field and motion blur and not on the GI. But generally, the 16 is a nice number. We have this light sample multiplier, and this is basically uh, this while you uh, controls the light samples, right? But uh, obviously this is a multiplier, so it will be multiplied by the value that you have set up here. So at the time you are using 32 light samples. Uh, and when you are working, for example, in an interior scene and you see a lot of uh, noise in your direct pass, so they're coming from the uh, lights, from the uh, direct lights, in this case, you need to actually increase this. And to actually uh, basically uh, figure out where the noise is coming from, whether it's from the direct lighting or it's from GI, you can set up your multi-pass at a direct and indirect pass. And if you see a lot of noise in this direct pass, that means you will have some noises in your uh, basically direct lights and uh, you need to increase the light samples for those lights. And in this case, you can obviously increase the light sample to something like four maybe. So this is what the light sample multiplier does. It basically increases the light samples and give you a more noise-free direct pass. Uh, we have this speed accuracy balance. We have this max sample intensity. And this wall, you basically controls the maximum brightness of the secondary GI uh, samples. And obviously, uh, the more you decrease this wall, you, uh, you're going to get a bit darker image, but it's going to be less noisy and it's going to be less accurate and faster. But when you increase this wall, you, you're going to get uh, brighter reflections, brighter refractions, but a bit noisier. Uh, when you have, for example, fireflies, uh, very bright pixels here and there, you can decrease this while you uh, to get rid of those. But uh, normally, max sample intensity of 20 is a nice value. And if you set this value to uh, zero, you're basically making Corona to be uh, unbiased. Not a good thing at the time being because it's not production ready. And we have this max ray depth, which is basically the maximum number of times a ray can bounce around the scene. For example, uh, this is like the ray depth wall use uh, for Arnold, if you're familiar with Arnold. In Arnold, basically, you have uh, separation between ray depth for reflection, refractions, uh, diffuse, but uh, here you have this one max ray depth wall use to control everything. For example, uh, if you want to see uh, multiple reflections of two mirrors uh, standing in front of each other, uh, you need to have uh, a high value of max ray depth. Uh, or if you want to have multiple GIs, you need to have a, a high value of max ray depth here. We'll be talking about this stuff later on. Okay, folks, so here is Corona for Cinema 4D. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, just leave me a comment if you are interested in a specific topic so we can create a tutorial for. But at the time being, I think we covered uh, the most important stuff as briefly as possible. And uh, hopefully when uh, we get the uh, main release of Corona, we'll be having a comprehensive introductory course for that. Also, we're going to be having more um, Corona for 3ds Max uh, tutorials as well on this channel. So make sure to subscribe and follow us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, thank you for watching. It was Kamel Khazri from MobraPlus.com. See you in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching this free video tutorial from MobraPlus.com. Please make sure to visit our website and check out our premium courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Arnold, V-Ray, Maxwell, Motion Graphics and much more. And also please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Vimeo to enjoy our free video tutorials.